college athletics. What does the fundraising look like in terms of balancing between NIL and facilities? Well, it's really a great question. I think when you take a look at college athletics across the board, there are so many things that you, resources that you have to bring to bear, whether that's NIL, whether that's facilities, whether that's nutrition. And what we have to do at the University of Maryland is make sure that we hit all those different categories. So this basketball performance center is one of many things that we have to do. NIL is a big part of what we have to do as well. So when I look at it, I look at a holistic approach, not just one thing. Dan, did you look into other facilities in the conference or across the country and studying what you guys wanted in this facility? Yeah, we did. Obviously, we had a lot of time. Uh, you, got, you had to have some patience, but we took a look at, we wanted to assess what our needs were. Uh, did a lot of talking with Brenda, Kevin. We looked at other facilities across the country because every time you build something, you want to try to see how can you make it better? What are you missing? And that's what we did here. And we feel like we've met the needs that, that we have as a program. And this is going to be a first class, first rate facility. You can take a look at Jones Hill House if you think that's nice. This is going to be just as nice, if not nice. Do you have what a total number on cost yet? You know, right now it's hovering around a little bit over 52 million. Uh, it's holding steady, so we're excited about that as well. What's going to be the coolest thing about this new facility, new, as far as features go? You know what I, you know what I really think is when you walk into the locker rooms and, and the technology that will be in there for our student athletes. You look at our locker room now; it's nice, but it's you know, when you add technology to it, when you add the lounge space that they're going to have, a place as Willard said it and Brenda said it as well, a place to call home. So I'm looking at the hydrotherapy, cutting edge technology, state of the art facility. There's so many different aspects of it. I think each student athlete, each coach will look at it and have a favorite area. How, look did the, at, how did the football project help with the design and build of this one as far as what was capable and what you guys could do? The football helped out a lot because what we were able to do, we went and looked at football. You talk about looking at other basketball performance centers around the country. We took a look at what we did in Jones Hill House. And when you have a facility, first of all, you want it to be functional. But then you've got to add those things that spruce it up, that the wow factor. And what football allowed us to do is say, okay, these are areas that we could have done just a little bit better. So let's bring this to the basketball performance center. So I think you're going to see somewhat of an upgrade when you take a look at things in the basketball performance center. You were sort of talking about the balance of NIL and facilities. And with facilities, you know, some, a donor gets their name on it. And it kind of lasts. Is the pitch different? Is there some more, um, is there something more appetizing when you're talking to a booster about something that's going to kind of have their name on it and last for years? I think each donor is different. Each donor has different interests and what, what our job is to do is to identify what their interests are and then bring things to fruition that meets what they like. Uh, when we talk whether it's NIL, whether it's facilities, whether it's scholarship endowments and so forth, we're just going to match people up in the right manner. But I will say this, Every single one of them is important, you guys. And you might sit back and say, well, how do you manage that? That's my job. That's our job to figure out, how are we going to drive NIL dollars? How are we going to drive money for endowments, scholarships, facilities, and other resources? Damon, why, why do you think this project became such a symbol over the years? Of, are, are we fully committed to the future of this program, or, or are we not? I mean, I've heard boosters kind of break it down that way over the years. Why, why do you think it became that? I, th I think there were a lot of questions around it simply because we're one of the last programs in the country uh, to not have a facility. I mean, when you look at the rich history and tradition of the, these programs, our, our women's basketball, men's basketball program, this is well deserved. This is something that should have been done, in my humble opinion, years ago, but I couldn't focus on the past. We had to focus on and get people to believe that we would bring this to fruition, and that's what we've done. And with their help and their guidance, uh, we've arrived today. I'm so excited for the student athletes and our coaching staff. And just nuts and bolts, will it be? Will there be a dedicated practice court for each program, or will it be one one main? You, practice you know court? what we did? We built one. We're going to have one main practice uh, gym. And when we assess that, because you'll look around the country, some have two, some have an oversized um, one. Ours is oversized, but we assessed. Okay, how do we meet the needs for practice? And we looked at. We've got the main court. We've got the pavilion, and now we're going to have this. So we have three courts that will be available to uh, both of our programs, and we feel like that will eliminate any of the uh, conflicts that we've had in the past. With Jones Hill House, Gossip Center, and Field Hockey, what sparked this recent surge of investment in athletics? Well, if you want to be the best, um, you know, we can't ask our coaches and student athletes to win championships without providing the necessary resources to do so. I've always believed that. And so I want us to be the best. 
My job is to provide those resources and get the heck out of the way and let them go out and do things. So you're going to see more. This is just the tip of the iceberg for us. But it's also having Dr. Pines who believes and understands the importance of athletics and the resources that we need. So you guys, this is going to be something that is going to make us better. And I want everyone to remember this. We moved into the Big Ten. And I, told, I always say this, the Big Ten is a more expensive neighborhood. So we've got to upgrade our house in this new neighborhood. Take Damon, one or two more. Damon, how does giving basketball new home enhanced opportunities for Olympic sports here and also um, opportunities to drive revenue directly to the center? So uh, that's another exciting piece of this. Great question. You know, everybody's focused on men's and women's basketball getting this new home. But when they move out of their offices, when they move out of their locker rooms, when they move out of their weight rooms, we're going to repurpose those facilities and renovate those facilities for several of our Olympic sports. So you're going to see those programs getting new sports medicine areas, strength and conditioning, new locker rooms, much more space readily available to them. So we're extremely excited about that as well. And What's it mean to break new ground today? Uh, you know, long time coming. Um, a lot of people doubted that this project would come to fruition. A lot of people were complaining about it. And this is, I want to say to our administration, to our university, this is, we, we stuck to it and we stuck to it and sometimes we just have to exercise patience and we did that, but uh, I'm glad we are where we are today.